Hello, everybody. Welcome to cardiology. This is a massive unit. There's a ton of material. Um, we're going to start off with embryology just to kind of get our, our feet wet here. Um, and I know this is actually somewhat of an intimidating topic. I'm going to introduce a couple things. I'm going to talk a little bit about some cyanotic congenital heart defects. And I don't want you to get too caught up in these. We'll talk more about these when we talk about shunts. The big thing I want you to take away from this lecture is really a lot of, there's a lot of memorization. There's a lot of structures. You know, we don't have to know all of the elements to what's going on. I want you to just focus in on the high yield structures, big picture. So when we're starting off with embryologic derivatives, you know, again, this, there's a lot of material on here, but let's just kind of break things down for the visual learners first. Here we go, we got two tubes here, we're at day 20, okay? So what these two tubes are going to do, these endocardial tubes, they're gonna fuse and they're gonna form a primitive heart tube. Now, there's five structures I want you to know off the primitive heart tube. The first one is the truncus arteriosus. Okay, so that guy's up here. Now, the truncus arteriosus, right, this is gonna form two major structures and this is particularly high yield. If it's particularly high yield, I'm gonna highlight it because there's a lot of material, like I said, that's on these slides, so I want us to just kind of you know, focus in, and if you have some extra time, go back and go through some of the other structures. But the truncus arteriosus is big because that's gonna form the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk. And we're gonna talk a lot about that in the next slide. So put that on pause. Let's go to the bulbous cordis. Okay, so the bulbous cordis, this structure forms the smooth portion of the right and left ventricle. Okay, now do not get this confused with the primitive ventricle which forms the trabeculated portion of the right and left ventricle. It's one of those things where they can kind of ask about this in you know a few different ways. Now, I, I just kind of remember, and I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I just think of you know a light bulb, and a light bulb is very smooth, okay? So a light bulb is very smooth. The bulb is cordis, being the bulb of the light bulb, being very smooth. So it's forming the smooth parts of the right and left ventricle, okay? And I'm not gonna go through, like I said, all of the details as to why this is, because you don't really have to know all of that. A lot of this, in this slide in particular, a lot of it is memorization, okay? So the primitive atria, same concept. It's gonna form the trabeculated portion of the right and left atria. So both primitive ventricle and atria are gonna form trabeculated portions of their respective tissues. So, okay, so here's the primitive ventricle. Here you can see the primitive atrium. And then there is one more structure. It's not labeled here, but down here we have the sinus venosus. And the sinus venosus is another structure that I think is particularly high yield for you to know. We'll talk about the coronary sinus in a little bit, but this is one of the particularly high yield structures you wanna remember that being associated with the sinus venosus. Part of the reason why this is such a high yield structure is because it's kind of like, you know, you think of, you know, a bunch of highway traffic systems and there's one stop in the middle, Times Square, where everybody's going to be, where all these roads kind of intersect. And that's, you know, in some ways how I think about the sinus venosus, truncus arteriosus, eventually going to the sinus venosus, the cardinal veins, which we'll talk about in a minute, also going to the sinus venosus, the vitelline structure, the vitelline vessels also doing the same. And what we have here is, you know, from the placenta, we're bringing in oxygenated blood, right? So we're bringing in oxygenated blood from the placenta, from mom, that is going through the umbilical vein. Remember, arteries take blood away from the heart. Arteries are not always oxygenated, right? When you think about the pulmonary artery, it's not oxygenated. When you think about the umbilical artery, it's generally not oxygenated blood because the rule is that the artery takes the blood away. Okay, the artery takes the blood away. So if this structure coming from the placenta is bringing blood towards the heart, even though it's oxygenated, it's not an artery, right? It's a vein because it's bringing blood toward the heart. The artery takes the blood away from the heart, being the umbilical artery taking the blood away. So for the umbilical vein, just remember this goes on to form the round ligament of the liver. Okay, so the round ligament of the liver, essentially it fibrosis, it forms a fibrous cord, and eventually forms the round ligament. And this is something that can sometimes come up. And this is kind of the other way that they can describe it, the ligamentum teres hepatis. Um, but again, the round ligament is probably the way I would remember it. And as far as the vitelline veins go, you know, when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking of blood really draining, you know, here from the yolk sac. Okay. So I'm thinking more, uh, from a GI perspective. Okay. So we're thinking about the gut tube during gestation. We're talking portal veins. We're talking superior mesenteric vein, inferior mesenteric vein, hepatic veins, right? Those are the things we're talking about with the vitelline vein. And the last thing here. I want to talk about or two things 
First, the common cardinal veins. This is another one where there are actually, you know, very specific cardinal veins. You can see them here that are associated with the uh, superior vena cava. But all you really have to know is that the cardinal veins are associated with uh, or are the embryologic derivatives of the superior vena cava. The endocardial cushions are going to come up a lot as we talk through a lot of the video series. Um, these are associated with uh, valve formation as, as well as the membranous portion of the ventricular septum, which you'll see in a moment is particularly high yield because the membranous portion of the ventricular septum is the most common site for ventricular septal defects. Okay, so that's why that comes up. Also remember, the heart begins beating around week four.